Hello, this is Rebecca Freedom, and this is episode number 45 of Heard Not Seen, produced by John Beethan. And today we're going to dive into the topic of how to find the right relationship for you. Now, this is a question that that comes up whether you're already married, if you're dating, if you are single, if you're chronically single, if you're just a whore and you're just out there hoying yourself around, you know, you little slut. <laughs> this is an explicit podcast. Just be be, where, be warned. There's going to be naughty words. And um, so I just want to get you all comfy and adjusted. So if let's think about what the right relationship really really means because uh, this is something that I know as a, a relationship counselor people come to and and they come with the knowledge that there's no perfect relation re- relationship like putting my fingers in air quotes like what is but nonetheless we seek for it we we seek to find the holy grail relationship and there's several filters that we run that through. I think uh, monetary gain is a historically, um, you know, historic way that we've gone about getting relationships. Thinks about Think about the kings that married the queens so they could get the land, so that they could have the progeny, so that their lineage could carry on. It got a little incestuous, got a little weird. And uh, we, we've carried that on in our own way. Thank you, Bravo TV, for giving us a shining example of the real housewives of wherever the fuck you are, um, where where we're studying, we're looking at people saying like, oh, look, they are real estate investors and they make so much money and they live in these elaborate homes. They must be happy. They must be perfectly sound in their relationship. But you know what the rappers say, more money, more problems. (laughs) So they just, the problems are a little bit more elaborate because, and I've mentioned this before, of something called Hedonic adaptation, which means that uh, when we get an object, we're like, oh, yay, shiny, exciting, new, fun, whoopies, I love it. And then five minutes later, we're like, I want something else. (laughs) And uh, that's, and we just adapt to um, the nuance of things where we look into like having an experience. So, um, and it really takes fresh eyes to be filled by the moment. So this is, I think, um, this is this is the thing that we search for. What is right? What is the right relationship for us? And okay, so we run it through the filter of money. Oh, if I have enough money and my partner has enough money and we have enough money together, then we're going to be able to just do whatever we want and have the house we want. And you know what happens when people have a bunch of money? Like, they have, you have to work for it. It's not like we're all Trustafarians. You know, there's my cousin. She has a husband who's a breadwinner, but he works 16-hour days. Like, and um, and so, you know, the balance is that her job is to be the housekeeper and make sure the house stays clean and the groceries are purchased and the dinner is cooked and that their son is taken to baseball on time. And then she's also responsible for, you know, her working out and staying sexy and the whatever the roles. And he's, you know, he's works hard and has definitely had stressful moments that are edging on a breakdown. And so you think about it, like if we think about the Elon Musk's of the world, like their SpaceX failed, what, like four times, I think, before it actually, um, three times, I think, three or four, we'll Google, whoever, whatever, before it went, we don't count the failures. We don't look at them and be like, oh, billions of dollars were lost. We're like, oh, Elon Musk's so amazing. Look at how, look at all that he's done. He must be the Messiah. And what I want to point out about that is that there's failures on the way to the quote unquote right relationship. So let's parse apart. The first filter is money. The second filter is attractiveness. Like, how, what kind of high can I get off of this other person? You make me feel so young. Whatever it is, you just, you want to feel a certain way. You want to feel like, 
elated, excited, sexy in your body, worshipped, you're like a queen or a king, like just too much effing responsibility. Like what if you just like let yourself have belly fat? <laughs> like stop with the Xenadrin, stop with things like the freaking Nutrisystem meals that are hawked by like Marie Osmond, like just stop with buying like waist trainers where you're like wearing a freaking girdle, like who cares? So your body's going to do shit, just like be happy with it. Be happy that you have limbs and arms and um, lungs that are working. And if you are diseased, be happy that you have an immune system that is going to repair your body. And if it's not, be happy that you're going to die, that you're done with this life, that you get to be able to have come here, served your purpose, served your mission, and gone on into the great mystery and beyond. Halla freaking Luya. But we spend so much time and money being like, I want to be attractive, inject my lips, put Botox in my face, augment my pecs, make sure that I have a personal trainer. And I say this in a way that sounds like I'm condescending, that it's like, this is not a worthy thing to do. Of course, the pursuit of your health is a worthy venture. But if you're running the perfect relationship, the right relationship through you, through the amount of how attractive you feel or how attracted you are to the other person, you're going to, it's again, you're going to come on, you're going to come up against failures. There's just going to be, there's days that you're just not going to be attractive. Like we all have bad breath. We all poop. We all have things that our bodies do to be able to, you know, survive and continue on. So first factor, money, second factor, attractiveness, sexiness, whatever. And then the third filter of right relationship, I think that we go, we go through is like the, our belief systems, specifically like religious belief systems, right? Like how Christian are you? Are you a little Christian? Are you a lot Christian? Fundamental, not fundamental, somewhere in the middle, only go to church during Easter. Hallelujah. Praise God. How Jewish are you? Like, are you going to eat the challah? <laughs> are you going to, are you going to have a mitzvah? Are you mitzvahing all over? How Muslim are you? I don't know anything about that culture. I can't say anything <laughs> about that. I have I heard the word jihad one time, and that's about as far as I go. But we we understand that there, you know, there's a devotion, like the traveling to Mecca and things like that. And the structures that run through these, again, religious dogmas and traditions, um, it's a little like go fish. A lot of people pair up according to their belief systems, right? Of According to like, I'm spiritual. Let that hang in the air for a minute because there's a crock of shit. <laughs> like with your freaking festival going, peacock wearing, Molly doing, ayahuasca ceremony on the weekend, spirituality. Like, oh, I saw God. It was so amazing. I was, oh, there was out there and I drank this thing and then now I'm so enlightened. Uh, okay. <laughs> Great. Are you any closer to like figuring out the mystery that is your existence? Maybe. And therefore, you can run that through a filter of what the right relationship is for you. Now, now that I'm done with my obnoxious pontificating, I, I want to bring it back to, to what I know right relationship is. The right relationship for us each individually is again, filtered through my filter of be still and know that I am God. That's it. And you can break that, you can break that down in a couple different ways. The, um, I believe it's the Abraham code says, you know, what is the name of God? Uh, I am that I am. And it's, it's not one sentence. It's I am that comma. I am. I am the trees. I am the desk. I am the torment. I am the joy. I am the light. I am the darkness. I am the struggle and I am the victory. I am all of these things. I am in the experience of these things. And so to find relationship, right relationship for you is to come back to a place where you 
can be still. Like get into the silence. Do not wear busyness as a badge of honor, which is a Brene Brown uh, sort of concept, is that we have thousands of outlets, apps, and distractions and ways to make us feel significant. Oh, well, I'm posting, so look at me. I'm significant. (laughs) Look at me. I'm on stage giving a talk to people, and I'm significant. Look at me. I'm planting a tree or having a baby or winning the lotto or, you know, having epic sex. I'm significant. I'm significant. I'm significant. Significance is just noise. It's mental chatter and it feeds the ego, which the ego needs to eat (laughs) occasionally. But again, we have the lightness and the dark inside of us and they're always battling and your life will be a representation of which one you feed. So be still. Because that's where peace begins to take root in our lives is in the stillness. Human beings, human being, as I am, I am that I be, I'm here in this moment And it's been said, we are human doings, the objects, we objectify each other. If I find my person, then I'll feel, well, good, great. You just made a relationship, an object. And guess what you get to do? You get to have an object uh, uh, temporarily, and then you'll adapt to it. And it will no longer bring you the initial excitement that it once did. And then you'll find something else and then something else and something else and something else. And you'll be removed from the stillness. You will be in the busyness. You will be in the frantic urgency of, of finding, discovering, uncovering. It's all right here. I am that I am. So take a breath. Therein lies the completion of death and rebirth the inhalation, filling your lungs up with vitality and washing your cells with oxygen and the nutrients they need, the pause at the top, the pinnacle, the peak before the exhalation, the release, the letting go. There in your breath is the cycle of life. The inhalation, the exhalation, the expansion and the contraction, the the widening of the walls of your heart and it's squeezing the blood back out in this rhythm, in this pumping that's happened. When's the last time you paid attention to your big toe? When's the last time that you said, thank you, feet, for standing and walking? Thank you, joints moving about the cabin (laughs) as you do. Thank you, nervous system, for taking in all this sensory input and translating it in a way that colors my world and the relationships that are born from that. Thank you. Come to the stillness. Be still. Be still. Your thoughts will move. Much like weather through the Midwest, they'll change every five minutes, five seconds. The thunderstorms will pass and the sun will shine back through. The wind will gust. The prairies will sway. You will feel compelled to action. Be still. Be still. And in this stillness, the wisdom that we are all endowed with will rise up. It will have a particular narrative just for you. So be still and know. And know. Come into that deep-seated knowing of sensation in your body. Not the frantic passing of thoughts through your mind. 
But that knowing that money is just a filter, it's energy, and it says very little about our divinity. It says everything about the way that we navigate through this life. And really, given our current culture, money is just a video game. It's all on cards and plastic and numbers and resources and billions of human beings all making it through life. Some called to be billionaires and others suffering the first years of their lives only to die young and everything in between. So come into the knowing of your purpose and your place on this earth Come into right relationship with your calling, with your mission, with what lights you up from the inside out. For some, it's environmental causes, advocacy. Uh, For others, it's hedonism, just debauchery. And finding that thing that truly lights you up. I look at cars. I look at some of the most like muscle cars or the artistry of the engine and the innovations that we've uh, introduced into the world. And I also can stand in museums and look at pottery and baskets that have been weaved hundreds of, of years ago and marvel at that innovation as well. So be still, come into the knowing of your path through sensation, through what is light for your body or heavy, knowing that that will always be the truest guide to be still and know that I am. I think Therefore, I am was a Cartesian thing, but I think I, I would offer that you feel that you have sensation in your body, hot, cold, warm, fast, slow, tight, loose, lit up, shut down, numbed out, opened up, turned on, turned off, that you know you are, you exist, and the validation is in the stillness. There will be other events that will come into your life where it'll take you out of that knowing and into the questioning and let that be part of the journey as well. Because I am God. (laughs) Be still and know I am God. And God being uh, a word I think we use for the creative and destructive force. Brahma, Vishnu, Kali, Kuan Yin, uh, to go into Buddhism, the, you know, um, obviously uh, the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the different sim- symbols we have for uh, this mysterious force we call creation and destruction that runs through all of our lives. So from this philosophical point, from this platform of being still, to find the right, right, right relationship for you when it comes to specifically romantic relationship. Be aware of the filters you're using, whether it's financial attraction, spirituality, wherever your value system lies, whatever points of view you're holding, whatever belief systems you're relying on to be able to construct the reality that you live in, be willing to let them all go and be come back to stillness. This will be the place where you are guided into having the conversations with the people that are meant to come into your life. And I have told the story and I will um, wrap this podcast up on this particular thing. Months ago, I had the awareness to go to a charity function and spend $300 that was not in my bank account. And so I used the fake money called the credit card to be able to pay for this. And in that, I met a gentleman who I, when I met him, I thought, meh, he's just another person. And now three months later, we have just completed 
um, a road trip, which took four days of going from California to Colorado. Um, and there's nothing like a road trip to reveal <laughs> your personality, the ways in which you handle conflict or uh, spontaneous events arising, whatever, and and how it shows like the ebb and flow of teamwork and what needs to happen. And, um, and this all came from following awareness inside my own body, a sensation of lightness that said, yeah, spend that money. And then I'm on this journey of relationship. And, and so what I know is that for four years, I've been in the classroom of being single, of, of basically, uh, making the majority of the, my life decisions for myself and kind of throwing spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks <laughs> metaphorically speaking. And, and now I'm in the classroom of, uh, the container of what you would call partnership or interrelating where there's two personalities coming together to create a third vehicle that is the relationship and the way and I and I trust the navigating of this relationship in that I resource and source that energy inside myself the stillness where I can check back in and say does this feel right for me? Does my heart feel lifted in this moment? Am I able to communicate my way through this challenge? Uh, and it definitely has, has given me the opportunity to look at the areas that I have blocks that I shut down and am shut off. And, and some of those blocks are really around um, trust and and value systems and um, and I certainly run it through the the containers of religious beliefs of financial and of attractiveness. Those are all there. So to give you the tool, the the sort of uh, the energy and the focus to be able to find right relationship for you has to come into making sure that you know that source is your supply, (laughs) that other human beings are classrooms of which you get to learn. And some will take you all the way through PhD, through death, they'll do us part. And and others will be just annexes, (laughs) just momentary things. Travel through those knowing that all the while, they are a practice for you to be your most expressed self, to have more of you and to show up as the person you want to be with in this world. I'll say that again. That right relationship will be between you and source energy, whatever you believe that to be. Nature, God, spirituality, Mama Ayahuasca, whatever it is, that that is your supply, that you're, that you are called according to a purpose and a plan. And that the relationships we have are always working on us like the sculptor with clay to bring out our true form. Michelangelo, I believe, was quoted as saying something to the effect of uh, sculpting marble And saying, you know, the form is already in there. It's just my responsibility to bring it out. And so, in your spirit and your soul, if you are desiring right relationship, know that you are the artist and the sculptor, and it is your responsibility to bring it out, your ability to respond. My invitation to you is if you are having a hard time Uh, being able to communicate, being able to become unstuck in the areas of finance, of um, body image, of belief systems, of points of view, then reach out to me at RebeccaFreedom.com. That's R-E-B-E-K-A-H Freedom.com. Thank you for listening and be set free.